So look, there's no doubt that we are in a crazy bull market when it comes to crypto. The only questions really are, one, is this a left translated cycle or are we getting, and when I say left translated cycle, I mean that the ETF has replaced the halving and we're getting a pump now and we're not gonna get a pump with the halving or whether we're gonna get this like double whammy and we're gonna get a pump now and then another pump when we get the halving. So there's no doubt that we're in a bull market, but the question is how much of a face melter is this bull market gonna be? The other question that I have is, well, if this is gonna be a bull market, how long is it gonna last and what are the best narratives that you should be investing in? And so today I've got a huge treat for you. I've got a banter, but it's not happening on a Friday. It's happening on a, on a Wednesday. And that's because I've managed to round up three amazing, amazing guests for us who are gonna bring us huge alpha. They're gonna tell us, how long this bull market's gonna start, gonna last for, when the bull market's gonna end, and they're gonna tell you exactly, exactly, exactly which narratives they're investing in. What a treat for a Wednesday. Let's get the show on the road. So as I said, I don't usually get uh, do banters on a Wednesday, but I just could these guests could only come together today. And so we had to do this today. So listen, welcome, welcome, welcome back. If you haven't exactly worked out what's going on here, yes, we are live on the new channel. We are live on Banter Plus. If you haven't subscribed to Banter Plus, subscribe to Banter Plus because this is where the alpha is. This is where it's all happening. It's not happening on the main channel anymore. It's happening here. Subscribe. Remember, if you do subscribe, you do stand a chance to win the banter bags. You're always asking, what are the banter bags? Well, the banter bags are where we take IDO locations, we put them into the banter bags, we get specific access to them. And then when we get to a million subscribers on Banter and 350,000 subscribers on Banter Plus, we give those bags to 10 members in the community. Now, last time we gave away like $10 million. So if you're not already subscribed, subscribe. If you are subscribed, uh, smash the like button. Let's get the show on the road. I've got a, a very, very, very big high alpha show for you guys today. Three of the best guests in the market, traders, analysts, etc. And we're going to talk about the bull market. We're going to talk about, you know, whether we're in a bull market. We're going to talk about the narratives. We're going to talk about how long this bull market's going to last. Just before we get there, though, I've got to, remember, I've got to remind you all that these banters, whether they fall on a Wednesday or fall on a Friday, are actually sponsored by NordVPN. Now, there are a lot of excuses that you can make for not making money in the bull market or not keeping all the money that you're going to make in the bull market. But the one excuse that's a very lame excuse was, I got hacked. That's a very lame excuse especially when to protect yourself from getting hacked costs you $202 per month or less than $3 per month, $2.91 per month. So why do you need a VPN? Well, remember when you surf, you actually expose your IP address to hackers, to Wi-Fi people, to, to, to the government, to exchanges. You don't want to be that guy that got hacked um, because they exposed the IP address. And for $2.90 per month, not only do you get a VPN, but you get a password manager, you get, uh, you get all the other things that protect you. Once you've got the VPN, you need two other things. You need threat protection. That is the Nord offering that protects you against the malicious websites where you think that you're on a certain website, but you're on a malicious one, you connect your wallet and then all your money gets drained and you've got nothing to do about that. So get Nord, get threat protection and get Incogni which keeps you completely safe and completely anonymous when you are uh, when you are surfing online. Incogni limits the access to your private um, your private information, migrates all your risks of identity theft. Guys, you're talking about less than ten dollars a month to keep yourself safe and support the channel. There are links below. Do me a favor, go and sign up on the links below. Let's see if I can even show you some of the links below. Just go to the to the to the links below. Sign up on the links below. Um, and protect yourself and spawn, and 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 uh, support the channel at the same time. All right, so let's go back to it. The bull market. How long will it last? Um, I know we're in a bull market, um, and why I say we're in a crazy bull market? As I said yesterday, we were we're at all time highs, and people are worried about this bull market. People are pretty nervous. So I want to get my guests on, and I want to ask my guests whether they'd actually be buying anything right now. I've got four, I've got three amazing guests for you. I've got uh, Rick Mando, who's a market analyst, a trader. I've got OSF, who's a beast trader. And then uh, a face that you guys definitely recognize, Miles, who's now moved to his own channel. He's shooting the lights out, the algorithm's loving his content, he's investing a lot in his content. Guys, welcome. Nice to have you guys all on banter. Nice to, to, to have uh, such a renowned bunch of people here. I have to ask you straight, I'm gonna get straight to the point. Would you be buying now? Would you be buying anything now? Who wants to start with that? <laughs> yeah, it's all yours, OSF. It's I'll all go. yours. Though. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. Um, I think it depends on your positioning beforehand. Like, I spent a lot of 2022, 2023 buying. For me, it's not really a case of adding more risk here. But, you know, 
this market feels like what it felt like at the beginning of 2021 before I was even in crypto. And I came in and bought Bitcoin at the all-time highs and ETH at the all-time highs. And we went, we went a lot higher from that. So I think if I didn't have any risk or exposure to this market, I would definitely be buying. But if I'm someone who's already like big in the game, I wouldn't be adding or increasing my risk here. I'd actually be thinking about areas where I want to piece out. And that's kind of how I'm viewing it right now. So let's let's quickly just let's just quickly get some perspective. Um, why I asked the question is if you look at where Bitcoin was two weeks ago, Bitcoin was at 50,000 two weeks ago. We're not 71,600. I know there's a lot of people that are sidelined and are, and and are thinking to themselves, should I miss the run? You still think that if they were sidelined and they're not invested, 71 is a good entry? Yeah, I, I think it probably still is. Like, you know, if you if you apply the same logic back to back in 2021 when Bitcoin breached whatever it was, 23, 24k, it was all time high, and it went on to triple that cycle, um, that was still a good trade, right? This cycle is different because you have a large specific buyer of Bitcoin right, right now, which is the ETFs. Right now, there's $500 million of inflow basically every day that's going straight into the Bitcoin ETF. I think most people expect that total net inflow to get to around 70 or $80 billion by the end of the year. We're only an eighth of the way through that. So there's a very obvious buyer for Bitcoin that I think will continue while the macro conditions stay in place. And so, yeah, like it's kind of, you look at that chart and you think, oh man, like I don't want to like buy this thing at the top. But you know, once something breaches its all-time high and it stays there for, for, for a while, for a few days or a few weeks, whatever it is, it kind of solidifies and proves that level. And at so, the end of the day, yeah, the, ETFs, the ETFs don't care. They're going to come in and keep buying it. They're not going to be like, oh, all-time high, I don't, don't want to buy it. It's so interesting because we know we actually did a show earlier this week where we said that, you know, that when Bitcoin broke its all-time high both previous times or all three previous times, it doubled within like the next 30 days after that. So that's why the question, Mando, I see you, I see you nodding. Let's assume that you were sidelined or you were only invested 20% of your capital. You saw this chart. You saw that the all-time high, you saw that the all-time high was breached. Would you have the balls to start buying now or would you sit on the sideline and wait for some kind of shakeout? Look, charts are great because they simplify things and you're able to see trends uh, quite well. But I actually think chartists could get hurt quite badly in, in this sort of move because you'll start to see things like it looks overbought, the RSI will look high, fear, fear of greed will look high. And what Ursef just said, Mix, is kind of what you need to be focusing on, which is the flows. Where's the Bitcoin supply going to come from and where's the Bitcoin demand going to come from? We know that we're getting about 500 million roughly of demand each day and supply pockets are are small. Like this may be some government Bitcoin that's going to come to market. Maybe some miners need to sell a little bit more before, before the halving. Like it's not crazy. Um, and so that's the thing I think you need to focus on. Like does that dynamic feel like it's going to change? And if not, then I, I think we're going to keep on pushing. Like I think the fear and greed could go above 90 for a, for a while here. The RSI index could all look overbought. Um, and if you look at the chart, you're going to scale yourself out of it when actually you should just be looking at the flows. Like the, the upside downside risk of Bitcoin here, I don't know. It feels very different to even when, when Bitcoin was lower. Like when Bitcoin was at 26K, it felt like Bitcoin could fall out of bed because there was no real buy. It. Like it could have dropped down below 20K. A lot of people were getting scared around that. But now I feel like if there was any sort of major dip on Bitcoin, it would get bought the hell out of. Like you're really just scared about that one day wick rather than anything major. Like the flows right now are we have massive buying and there's very little supply. In fact, the halving is going to cut that supply even more. So, so we've got yeah, bulls. I we've got two, two full <laughs> tilt degen bulls. Miles, what's your view here? So you've been doing a lot of market research at the moment. If you were sitting sidelined or if you had only, only invested 20% of your capital, would you have the balls to ape into Bitcoin at 71,500? Yes or no, sir? I've kind of been in this predicament myself, actually, because I've been shifting capital around um, with my like asset allocations. And I've kind of come to the conclusion that short term, I probably wouldn't go down that route. But long term, I still don't mind Bitcoin. Like if you've got like a five to 10 year time horizon, then, you know, longer term, if you're trying to position yourself in a hard asset, you know, something equivalent to, to gold, something that's not going to depreciate, of course, you know, you should be comfortable shifting into Bitcoin at pretty much any price. Like I'm pretty much always bullish on Bitcoin. Yeah. But then I also do look at the Bitcoin dominance at 54%. Um, and it's been on a run. I think it's, you know, pushing back towards its local highs again. And, and I just think there is probably just more upside in the alts. So for me, it's more about identifying. This is probably something we'll get onto later in the show, like the undervalued altcoin sectors, as opposed to trying to squeeze that extra juice out of Bitcoin. But that's just what where my focus is, because I know I'm not going to be able to, five, 10 X on Bitcoin, I'll be able to maybe, you know, 
two, two and a half X over the next year or two if things go really well. So this is the chart of the QQQ versus Bitcoin. I spoke about it with Raul Paul last week. It's down 99.7% against Bitcoin in the last 10 years. So what you said is, you know, you got to buy Bitcoin at any price because the trade is seems to be a one-way trade. And this trade could actually be accelerated, actually, because of the ETF. That's the conclusion that we came to. Um, okay, so we've got four crazy bulls. I mean, let's just, I'll, I'll succumb and I'll say I would be a buyer. In fact, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I've got a NASDAQ. It's not an ETF. It's a fund that tracks the NASDAQ that's becoming unlocked. And I've got quite a significant amount of wealth, which I've locked up in there. And now I've got to make a decision whether I lock it up or whether I go more into Bitcoin. And even though I'm irresponsibly long Bitcoin, I just can't justify locking it up for another three years into the NASDAQ when 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 Bitcoin is, is when I, I understand what's about to happen to Bitcoin and I've bought into this chart thesis. So maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm going irresponsibly long, but that's what I've decided to do. So question. I've seen two theories about this cycle. The first theory that I've seen about the cycle is I've seen the theory that I think we've all seen, which is the left translated cycle, which basically in a nutshell, what this left translated cycle means is, or says is that usually we get the big run after the halving, but this time we had a catalyst which happened before the halving. And so the whole cycle has become left translated and that things are happening really, really, really quickly now. The cycle is faster, the dips, the breakouts, the recoveries, the rotations are all getting faster. That's the one cycle. The one cycle is that the, the left translated cycle is made everything much quicker. But then there's another theory. And the other theory is a derivative of the left translated cycle. And what it says is, we're actually gonna get two pumps. The one is the left translated cycle. We're gonna have a, a double barrel face melting cycle. One is we have the ETF approval, which acted like the halving, because it had the same effect as the halving. But then as plan B says, he says the first three halvings were not priced in and probably the next halving is also not priced in at some point. So if that happens, we could get a double whammy. We could get like one pump because of the ETF approval and one pump because of this, because of the halving and then get a double, a double whammy. So I'm interested to hear from you guys what you think. Is it just the fact that the whole cycle has shifted left? Everything's going to happen quicker. It's going to end sooner. Or is it the normal length of cycle? And we're just going to get two big pushes, one from the halving and one from the ETF catalyst. Manda, I see you're, you're uh, nodding. Um, I guess that's because you really like what I'm saying here. And um, you have, a, you have a, some kind of opinion. Look, I think it's a little bit early to tell. Um, the, the, I think the things coming up that we know are is the halving. Uh, after that, like we're still unsure if the ETH ETF is going to happen. That could feel like a very different sort of altcoin season. Like that would be an obvious altcoin season for me because then they would look to various different ETFs if they happen. It's looking more than likely now that that might not happen, or at least that's what poly market's saying it will be. So 24% this, 24% chance of approval. The last thing right. that I read from the from the Bloomberg analysts, they've given it a 35% chance. The SEC so hasn't, been, hasn't been hasn't been meaningfully looking. engaging. Yeah, it's not it's not as uh, Castillo says, it's not looking good, brev. It's not looking good, brev. Exactly. Um, yeah, that was at like 75, 80% in January, right? So, and I don't think TradFi, like when I, when I listen to CNBC or Bloomberg talk about that, they still think that the alpha trade is buying ETH into this ETF. And I think that that is actually, we're getting quite a precarious trade with how ETH has performed over the last couple of months. I think the altcoin season then for like to have a more extended, you know, I think Bitcoin can keep going just with ETF demand, but for, for this to really extend and be a broad based rally, we kind of do need to see number of wallets start to tick up. We started to see that a bit more on Solana. I think it was the highest number of um, daily wallets yesterday on Solana, but we're still only, I would say 30 to 50% of where we were in 2021 in terms of like actual activity in terms of wallets. You might argue with the ETFs, part of that is less on chain wallets. So like maybe, maybe it, Crypto is becoming a bit broader without actually having more active crypto users, so to speak. Um, I think we could have that. I think we could have that. Uh, for me, the, the strongest trends are things like gaming, the RWA narrative. Like if we start putting, you know, some of these hundreds of trillions of assets on chain, then we could really, um, we could really get a, an extended bull. And maybe you start to see the ETFs out of Hong Kong, out of the UK. They, they start to drive a, a broader base rally. I think I would love for this to not just be a cycle. I would love to this actually be the adoption cycle where this isn't just like, right, this random run up and then we all, all comes crashing down, down and we all own, you know, tier two dog coins on Solana. Like I actually really hope that this turns into something more than just 
a a vacuous cycle. So um, I, I'm I'm aiming for this to be a longer base, longer one. Perhaps we have seen like a, a big run up here that we like we won't it won't be sustained at the same sort of um, velocity. But I would like to see you know this this last for multiple years and but ideally everything, make- everything happens in a cycle. I mean, even the stock markets have their cycles. You go up and you go down. Now, granted, the stock market cycles have been much more forgiving than the crypto cycles. And you could probably also say that since you know now we're getting so many Bitcoin brought up by the institutions. I mean, they already own like one million Bitcoin out of the twenty-one million already owned by by the ETS more or less. And so you could argue that if they carry on buying like this, then crypto will become a derivative of of the macro cycle and then we won't get the four year or the three year or the two year bear markets we'll get much shorter bear markets like we've been getting with the s p so i do i do think that that's something that we should pay attention to how much bitcoin the institutions are controlling because that could dictate the cycle that we follow i agree with that I, i that's basically what i'm asking for i'm asking not for another two and two and a half year bear cycle where like nothing happens there's no on chain activity it feels as though it feels as though this could change. We're actually starting to get adoption in a range of different ways. And I'm kind of hopeful that this is a longer cycle. It doesn't have to maybe be as aggressive um, as what Plan B is saying. You made but- a good point, man, though. You spoke on RWA, you spoke on gaming. I think it's really important for people to position themselves in the narratives that can be relatively resilient, even to bear market conditions. Now, I'm totally cognizant of the fact that crypto in general is not going to be fully resilient. Things are still going to have massive drawdowns in a bear. But if gaming really does hit that you know, adoption inflection point. If things like AI can grow to the size of magnitude, like we think that they can, if RWA yields can actually be successfully imported um, on chain, then we can can see that um, additional resilience. And I think it's important to construct your portfolio in such a way that you do have exposure to these verticals, you know, that, that can also perform longer term. If we do see some sort of extended um, adoption curve, as you alluded to. So look, I got, I drew this chart for us. This is the chart of the QQQ. I've taken it up back to 2008. 2008 was absolutely brutal. And if you look at the recovery in 08, and I'm going to go just from here to probably here, that was uh, 104 weeks. So that was two years. But otherwise, if you, and this was, you know, this was like a meltdown where the government didn't know how to deal with things. It was the first time they, they actually tried money printing. But otherwise, if you look at the bear market since 2008, I mean, I think the one thing that will stick out here is that they don't really have long bear markets. I mean, let's just take this one over here, which was the 2019 bear market. It was a couple of months. So I don't know. It feels like in the stock markets, the cycles are much more forgiving than in the in the crypto markets where we seem to have the, those long dips. So I'm kind of hopeful that if the institutions start to get hold of a large chunk of the Bitcoin, that will start to be the orchest- the, the the orchestrator of the of the cycle. And if that's the orchestrator of the cycle, then the way I said, we'll probably have much more forgiving cycles. I'm hoping that that's the case. OSF, is it a left translated cycle? Is it a double barrel cycle with two catalysts, one being an ETF and one being a halving? Is it a different kind of cycle? I don't think, for me, the halving is not really a catalyst. For me, the halving is just a narrative. And I think the halving seems to have correspond with market cycles. Like if you look at traditional markets, those cycles seem to correspond with the Bitcoin halving. I think that's, it's maybe not coincidence, but it just, the timing I think is, is fortunate there. So for me, like, I think it's, there's a greater chance that it is a left translated cycle because you have had a catalyst um, that's occurred, crypto to, to rally a lot. Um, you are at a point in time where macro, like stocks are at all time highs, uh, many risk assets are at all time highs and, and we're creeping higher as well. And I just think that seems to be the timing this time around. I don't think, I mean, I don't think just a Bitcoin halving next month is going to be the sole reason as to why things take another leg higher. I think if they take another leg higher, it will be on their own merits and not just because of, of, of that halving. But I think my hunch is it's closer towards a left translated cycle. I think we are probably, um, you know, maybe 50% of the way through it. Um, I don't think we've seen the highs yet. I do think Bitcoin will go above 100K. I think we'll see much more strong price action. I think we still have a great big retail influx to come as well. But we are, you know, we're not, like we're in it you know you might, a few months ago we were it's early in the cycle we're not it's early in the cycle anymore we're we're definitely through some meat of it i think okay miles what, what are you i'm going to take you through some statistics in a second but miles what, what are your thoughts left translated cycle longer same length cycle with two catalysts some other theory it's very hard to compare to last to the previous cycles isn't it because we've never seen this like institutional demand flow underpin the asset class we've never seen speculation on etfs like across ethereum but we've also never seen um the type of products that are now shipping 
like think about it like since the last wave of in investment that kind of came into crypto in 2021 there's been like three to four really strong years of building that actually took place throughout the bear in those top verticals you know like gaming infrastructure so it's going to be interesting i don't know if i can exactly answer it because it's impossible but it does it does seem very different this cycle i think in terms of the the shorter term run-up it may be leaning left but in terms of the potential for this to be an extended run um i, I also think that's almost equally a possibility well, one thing i would say by the way about bitcoin etfs right now where everyone's like all oh, right great bitcoin etfs institutional money it's all coming in they're all buying bitcoin um if you look at the ETF market in the traditional finance world, it's great when the ETF is buying, but it's horrific when the ETF is selling. And there will be a point in time when the Bitcoin ETF will start selling, it, you know, getting redemptions and selling Bitcoin. And just like it is coming in, buying every single day now, it's going to be coming in and selling every single day at some point in time. It's going to actually have the, reserve, the reverse impact to some, quite some aggression as well that I think people are not aware of. Or like No one is thinking, oh my God, what's going to happen when the ETF sell Bitcoin? Because that will happen. Like you will, you will, see, you will see an outflow at some point in time. But and I mean, you have to be conscious of that. I think. I think we can kind of say that that's not going to happen for the first twelve months. I mean, there's a lot of tax implications of uh, being in the twelve first... months. Are, twelve months is a long time, man. It's a long time, man. Like twelve months in this space, and we're already some way through it. Like it's a very long time. I I agree with you. I, I definitely agree with you. But I think it's not a given. I think, okay. I think it's just you'll have higher correlation with 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 macro. So like, if we have a, a horrific period here for the Nasdaq, let's say you know Nvidia. Takes a bit of a nosedive and and you take some tax stocks with it. I, I would be unsurprised if you start seeing some some outflows. We used to we used to trade a market where where ETFs, me and OSF used to trade the same market, but we um where ETFs used to trade and like they are priced indiscriminate. So like right now, just as much as the RSI goes higher every single day, and it doesn't really matter because the the ETF just has to buy. Sometimes when they have to sell, things can just get a little bit sloppy and you get some crazy prints. But I'm not scared about that right now i'd be scared about that in like 24 months more i think i agree i mean i agree that 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 i've seen etf selling and when etf sell it's quite a, a scary thing but i also know that i think this this etf is still too new for selling and i think barring a a, a massive stock market correction or barring something fundamental I don't, I don't see the etfs offloading yet these guys usually i mean i know how the 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 bigger family offices and stuff like that uh, allocate their capital. They say, look, you know, two percent of our portfolios must be in Bit in in a certain asset class, and probably Bitcoin in this case. And so, you know, they they hold it at two percent. I don't think that they filled up their two percent to the point where they need to start rebalancing portfolios. But I may be wrong here. I mean, I, I may be I may be completely wrong here. Um, so I did something earlier today, and I think it's worth maybe talking about. I plotted the amount of time since the breach of the previous all time high that these bull markets have lasted. And so you can see that in 2017, there were 41 weeks um, and, until the, the, the Bitcoin top. In 2021, it was 49 weeks. In 2013, it was 39 weeks. So you can say that the, you know, the average cycle from when we break the all-time highs have been about 40 weeks, give or take. Keen to hear what your views are. I mean, does the all-time high come in 39 weeks because we breached the previous all-time high convincingly last week? Um, what do you, what are your thoughts here? Yeah. I mean, it's not, I don't think it's that dissimilar to the, to, to, to the last point. My, my hope is that this is like a multi, a multi-stage rally. I do think Bitcoin will lead this, this, I do think we need to see like slightly higher number of wallets to see a sustained, um, adoption. We're starting to see that. Um, I think if you start to see international ETFs start to come through, if you start to see more sovereign nations come through, there's a lot of talk about obviously different Gulf nations buying Bitcoin at the moment. Um, that would be very, 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 very strong. But then I would like to see a bit more adoption. Like if potentially after the next election, you see slightly more softening of regulation in the in the US, or at least any regulation about the use of RWAs. At the moment, there's really just a pass for treasury bonds. Um, but that's about it. Like if they start extending that to other assets and you start to have a, a stronger environment there for tokenization, I think we could get a very, very strong um, broad-based rally like we have all the tools for that kind of setup um uniswap may have won some sort of decision recently which could we should revolutionize revolutionize that whole DeFi la landscape as well which i think could be pretty strong um so yeah i i think i th i think this rally could take could be uh could be a longer period like i i think it could be more than more than a year i think we're talking a two-year rally here yeah. So, if, okay, uh, Miles, what do you think? I mean, do you do we follow? I mean, everything is happening very fast now. Do we follow this and peak in forty weeks? 
or does this last longer? Yeah, I, I think it's pretty similar. Like just based on the data we have, it, it looks pretty similar to the previous cycle. So there's nothing really so far that's going to shift my view until we start seeing um, Bitcoin kind of, you know, peel off. If that starts to happen, then we can start to recalibrate. What it's currently indicating is is something towards, you know, a late um, end of year peak, potentially um, Q1 2025. So that's kind of what I'm, what I'm eyeing in terms of a top for Bitcoin. In terms of a top for altcoins, alts usually do peak um, a couple months after that Bitcoin high. So obviously everyone knows I'm I'm heavier in, in the altcoin market. So I'll be I'll be watching those signs pretty closely. If Bitcoin does put in a high, I think alts can go on that last like face melting kind of blow off top rally, and then that's that's when the bear market will likely begin. So I read this tweet, which I think was profound. Um, it's a long tweet. I'm not going to read the whole tweet, but I think it is absolutely profound. It says, 80% of profit are made in the last 20% in the cycle. Learn how to recognize an old season and make the most out of it. What triggers an old season is not the percentage return of Bitcoin, but its wealth effect. And since September 2023, Bitcoin's market cap has grown by $941 billion, which means that effectively we're saying we've grown by almost a trillion dollars, which is the entire economy of Saudi Arabia, Netherlands or Switzerland. He gives the other things. He says, given that most altcoins are relatively small in size, it will not take much of this wealth to significantly increase the price. The whole altcoin market cap, excluding ETH and, and major stablecoins, is $588 billion. So what will happen next? And effectively, he says, we're going into a face-melting altcoin si cycle because of the wealth effect that Bitcoin has created. So the si he, he, he talks about the size of Bitcoin market relative to the size of the altcoin market. And it, it's happened every year. But this year, we're getting a mismatch between the, the growth effect in Bitcoin and the, the, the alts. And so we're about to get a massive altcoin cycle. We will get a, a massive altcoin cycle. So question, when does this altcoin cycle actually start? Because we keep calling it and we keep waiting for it. And a lot of our alts have actually done fantastically well. But we haven't got to face melting altcoin season yet. For those of us who've been here, I mean, I think we've all been here for multiple altcoin cycles. We're not there yet. I mean, we've had some great returns, but we're not there yet. Or, or are we? Well, so let me ask you a question. Out of us four, we're, we're in the space every single day. How much of your portfolio is Bitcoin versus altcoins right now? Right now, for me my, right now, Bitcoin's my biggest holding. It shouldn't have been, but it just performed so well that it just became my biggest holding. And I just haven't had the conviction to start trading out of Bitcoin into alts. Even though when I look at this chart, I mean, just look at the alts for the one month. The, the, the meme coins, 700%, 500%, 783%. The, the, uh, the uh, AI coins, 294%, 321%. The file storage coins, 338%. File coins also somewhere 100%. Still doesn't feel like an altcoin run. I mean, I don't know what's wrong with me. Like, this is, you know, this is a month. This is a month and I still don't feel like we're in an altcoin season. It's not. I, I still don't think it is. And I think it's mainly because of positioning. I, like, I feel it on CT every day. Everyone's waiting for altcoins. You can feel it even on the days, you know, when Bitcoin does nothing. Like today, for example, Bitcoin's barely moving. Altcoins are moving lower. And the CT timeline will be a shambles because everyone is positioned in altcoins. Everyone's expecting altcoins. I have to, I think you have to appreciate that this, We even if we get an altcoin season, it might be more protracted because people are fully invested in the crypto space in, in altcoins right now. I, th I feel like, I think I saw the other day that the OI and altcoins uh, overtook Bitcoin for the first time ever. Um, yes. that, was, that was a couple of weeks ago, right? So people are positioned in altcoins. And generally when people are positioned in altcoins, you're not just going to randomly see everyone make a ton of money. So what I would say is it's going to be slightly more protracted. I do think you're looking for catalysts there. But in terms of the best risk reward trades, I, I still think Solana is probably the best because it doesn't seem vacuous. Like it, you know, there's actual users every single day right now. It's we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. I just for now, I just want to know, like, are we in altcoin season? Are we not yet in altcoin season? We're going to get to all the narratives in in a second, and I've got a lot of data on the narratives. But Miles, are we in altcoin season? I mean, well, can you hand on your I heart tell I, me? I, Hand on your heart, can you tell By me that if- By definition, it can't be an altcoin season. Because the definition of an altcoin season is, is you know, when Bitcoin underperforms and altcoins perform. So if we're looking at the definition of an altcoin season, we're, we're not there. We're not even close. I think, well, we might have been close at times, um, but I, I don't think we would be now. But we can check this out. No. Only 59% so, of the top 100 coins have outperformed Bitcoin, which means it's not yet an altcoin season. Altcoin season starts when 75% of the coins have outperformed Bitcoin. That's if you want to go by sticky definitions, mm -hmm. that's the sticky definition. 
Yeah, I think what we're seeing now is a lot of pre-positioning, pre-positioning and hypey narratives. So I think I think it's a lot of people trying to front run. You know, I always think of that phases, you know, phase one, phase two, that that classic image. I think a, a lot of people are like a bit smarter. I don't think a lot of retail is back. So there's a lot of seasoned market participants now, which have kind of skipped straight to phase four and they've just started like gambling on a lot of these um, like, you know, strong trends. I also think what's happened with the meme coins, like you'll notice the things that are really up are like AI, meme coins gaming a little bit but not even much it's mostly there it the, is. the, the yeah, AI it is. And meme coins he has the the best performing memes month to date the best performing tokens month to date meme coins 177 percent uh two identity but it's a very small sub stack and then ai and then two down deep in gaming those are the pretty much the the big performers i don't think the other narratives are barely running l1s l2s they're not really running apart from like you know your, your leaders sol injective the other ones are playing catch up but they're still they're still relatively far behind. So I think the memes is really being driven by a lot of retail that were in the market last cycle, just starting to tune back in. Like they're seeing Bitcoin on CNBC, they're seeing it on Bloomberg, they're, they're seeing it everywhere. They're starting to tune back in, they're re-downloading their wallets. I know the, the Coinbase and um, Robinhood and these kind of apps have started charting recently. And, and they're just checking back in, they're buying some memes, they're playing around, but it's not like a full-blown alt season. They're mostly just in the memes still, which is a good sign. Actually, some people say it's bearish, but it's bullish. Because it so, means that, you know, old participants are coming back slowly. So, okay, fair enough. Is this meme coin hype uh, froth? I mean, like I must say that the most money that I've seen made around the office, and I use the office as the, the big degens in crypto, the most money that I've seen made out of anyone, out of anything so far in the cycle has definitely been meme coins. These guys are investing $1,000 and walking away with six and $700,000 in some cases. And they're repeating this multiple times on dogs and cats and, and stuff like that. That usually is a sign of froth. Usually that's a sign of, uh, I don't know, big correction on the way. H how do you feel about the, the froth levels in the market? I think, uh, I think in the past, you've had sort of like meme coin runs and then it's sold off within the last two years. And that's often been a sign of froth. Like when Doge rallies in the last two years, everyone's like, oh, now it's time to sell. But I think you have to recognize like when the market paradigm shifts, and right now we're not in like a two year bear market We're in the middle of a bull market and in the middle of a bull market, meme coins and NFTs and everything else can do crazy levels. And the thing about meme coins compared to other protocols or other chains or whatever is they're not bound by any logic or any law or any relative value or any, you know, models or anything. It's just like, hey, here's a coin. A bunch of people find this funny. A bunch of people are going to buy it and they're going to run it up to some crazy price. And that crazy price can literally be anything. I mean, Shib is still at Shib and Doge is still at twenty to thirty billion dollar market caps, right? So, I think um, I think this time round, it's perhaps not a sign of froth. It's just a sign that we're in this crazy bull market, um, and maybe there's more of it to come. But I think this bull market, you'll still see narratives, and that one narrative will take play, then capital will shift to the next thing until you really have like full on retail inflow. And right now, the narrative has been meme coins for a while. It was gaming for a while. It was like alt L ones and Solana, I don't mind. I don't mind narratives. I don't mind narratives like gaming where, you know, I know that eventually one or two games are going to hit it. And, you know, those games are really going to change the world because, you know, we're going to have a big play to earn economy and it's going to be play and earn and it's going to be fun. It's going to be Axie 2.0 or XC 3.0. I don't mind RWAs because I think RWAs is a great narrative. I don't mind. I don't even mind AI, even though I'm very skeptical about how many AI applications. But when people convince themselves that a dog with a hat is an investment... And I know that a lot of people here are convincing themselves that a dog with a hat and that Vitalik's cat is an investment. I start to worry. Like to me, it's not, that it's is- not an, It's not an investment though. I don't think anyone, I mean, I hope people don't sit there thinking it's an investment. I think it's a gamble or it's a play or it's a trade. It's not, it's a, you know, you can deploy, everything you deploy capital in doesn't have to be classified as an investment. And I like, for me, meme coins have been my biggest wins this year. And I bought a lot of dog with hat and I didn't, I didn't sit there thinking, right, this is Have you sold a it? safe investment. Um, I've sold 75% of it. Yeah. Miles, did um, you so buy dog with hat? I bought a little bit. I bought, I talked about it on my, on one of my streams or shows. I think I got it at like a dollar. I'm still holding most of it actually. So and I don't what, know. What, what, what's, your Q, sell, but... what's your cue to exit? Like you're saying you're still holding most of it. What's your cue to exit? So, so here's the amazing thing about spot trading. And even low leverage trading, you can apply the same logic. You don't need a queue. You just need to be smart with your risk management. So like if you if you get in early enough into a coin, and I hope like a lot of people got decent entries on coins, 
you can just like eventually raise your your floor. So I've got limit orders that I've just been raising. So I, you know, I got in I think a dollar ten. So it's been a dollar twenty, dollar thirty, dollar forty. You just keep raising. Once it hits that floor, that that'll be my my uh my. So you're not you're not here. waiting for a certain p period in the market. You're not looking at it as an investment. You don't think that you're going to be holding dog with hat into the next cycle. That's not part of what you're holding at the next no. cycle. No, okay. it's, it's shorter term. It's probably one to two months. But if but if we start seeing the signs of a strong like a meme reversal, I'll probably just get out. I'll just cheat it. Uh, Amanda, are you? Did you buy dog with hat? Yeah, of course. Me, me and SF are big into meme coins. Like, I, if you if you zoom back out of that chart, it was actually a period before. Like last month has been great for meme coins. But before, before that, Doge didn't move. Shit didn't move. All these. Whiff was it trading at two hundred million dollars? Yes. Um, and the thing about about meme coins is they have amazing positive momentum because it's always into listings. Unlike any other coins, right? Like they don't really list or they don't go through any sort of launch pad. So as soon as the volume starts picking up, they start to get listings, and then the momentum just takes them away. So like they are quite good risk reward bets um, uh, in sort of early cycle, and there's been a few of them, right? Like this this cycle. I um I think you have to be wary that when that listings momentum goes you're really in it for lower multiples like the the, the best meme coins are the ones like sub 500 million uh, and obviously it's being a public commentator it's very difficult to talk about talk about that sort of stuff but they are the best risk reward trades because when if they get enough volume and positive momentum then you know they can they can really get going i i, I have less of a moral like moral issue with meme coins like i think do I think that the creator of Doge or like Doge right now is an issue? Like people still argue that Bitcoin arguably like has memetics in it. Like people have to believe in the value of it to, to stay stay valuable. I um I I agree that it's it's showing signs of froth, but it really before that that space was dead. Part of the reason why it really really went went ballistic is because a lot of people in crypto, even in crypto day in day out, had basically sold all their meme coins and only owned altcoins, assuming they were going to get an altcoin cycle. And then this meme coin cycle came out of nowhere and caught a few people off guard as well. So like, I think part of it was people were under, under invested to a space which traditionally outperforms everything. Like each cycle, memes normally are the crazy trades that do tens of thousands of percent ROI. I think we've probably seen the back of the two biggest maybe, or two or three biggest, but there's no doubt in my mind. Like the meme coin volume on Solana right now is unbelievable and there is no doubt in my mind that the big um you know centralized exchanges are going to try and list some of them they're already trying to so like like mid-tier solana memes are getting are getting listed right now and i think that's just because the volume is crazy right now i love meme coins as long as you understand that meme coins are a casino and they are yeah. you're trading in and out of a casino and you're not holding them into the next cycle you don't marry a meme coin uh, I'm very happy to marry some of my gaming bags and some of my real world asset bags and my layer one bags and my storage bags because I have. In, in fact, I looked at my portfolio for, and I broke down my biggest holdings in my portfolio. And actually, pretty interestingly, this is the biggest holdings in my portfolio. Uh, Bitcoin, Solana, Injective, Ethereum, Arweave, Rune, Kujira, Render, Superfarm, Astroport. That is literally, I just pulled my top 10. Every single one of them is between two and four cycles old. None of the big holdings in my portfolio are one cycle old, which just shows the wisdom of holding tokens through multiple cycles. But I just can't get myself to hold a meme coin into multiple cycles. I did buy some meme coins. I bought some dog with hat. I bought some uh, based based uh, Brett. I bought uh, I bought some Redog because I love the Ted, the Ton blockchain. Um, I bought I even bought uh, Elizabeth Horan just because it, for me it's the official token of the crypto resistance. Uh, you know, Love I just it. feel I just feel that she's that's the the one that you have to hold. There's an important thing to know here, though. Like, do you, do you, I think saying that you're going to buy altcoins instead of meme coins, like people have to appreciate that AI coins, for example, no one's really using any of this tech right now. Gaming, they are valuations rather than users. Like, only a few of these games have tens of thousands of users. You are essentially buying a meme at the same time. You are buying a narrative. So let's, don't sit there and think I am buying you. Let's go a meme. there. Let's go there because <laughs> Ma Miles has been super bullish the AI coins. My theory about the AI coins is they're all memes. And, you know, like, I, I think that barring maybe three, three tokens, and I think BitTensor is a good, is a good uh, proof of concept. Tau is a great proof of concept. I think Render, and I think, to be honest, all the GPU plays, if they get the GPU play right, solve a real-world problem that can only be solved in crypto. But barring that, I think that most other AI tokens are actually meme coins. And the trigger for the meme coin, instead of it being us, it's it's the big, 
the real world, the NVIDIA world, um, breaking news headlines. You know, like if you look at WorldCoin today, WorldCoin today has like a market capitalization of $100 billion, which is more than open AI. Now, you can't argue that WorldCoin should have a bigger valuation than the whole of open AI. That's got to be a meme. And the meme is being pumped by the real world as opposed to by the crypto bros. I mean, Miles, I know you're super bullish about AI, or you've been making a lot of, a lot of tweets and a lot of um, uh, uh, videos on AIs, and, and they've been fantastic. But keen to hear your view about, like, are AI coins meme coins with a different catalyst that's not, that's not Twitter? Is every coin a meme coin? I mean, effectively, are all these valuations bullshit and are we just actually all trading meme coins and some of us just justifying that these meme coins are actually investments? Like, how do you, how do you justify this? I'm keen to hear your view. A lot of the AI, not a lot, 99.999% of the AI coins are absolute vaporware rubbish. They aren't even AI. My theory is AI, given the transformative impact it's having around the world, given the shortage for GPU power, my theory is that I can't really justify how it sits ranked 23 out of all the crypto sectors at a $23 billion valuation. I strongly believe it's going to push towards a trillion dollar val because crypto is a highly liquid sector. It's going to catch a lot of the overflow and a lot of the speculative um, the speculative interest in AI. That's, that's not going into the stock market. It's up to the crypto market now to produce the products which can actually fulfill this promise. And are they currently in the market? I don't think so. And I've said this on the shows. A lot of my plays are speculative in terms of the narrative. But I do believe that in terms of like a flywheel, there, there isn't a stronger vertical in crypto than deep in it. Maybe we can go. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let's later, let's but... let's maybe play let's maybe play a little game here. If I were to give you ten thousand yeah. dollars, and I were to tell you that you need to put the ten thousand dollars into four narratives, and you can decide the split of the ten thousand dollars, where which which four narratives would they be, and what would the split be? So I mean, like for me, naturally, the four areas. I mean, layer ones for me is quite big. I think deepen. So the next one for me would be the yeah, deepen would be my next one. Probably after that, I'd go into the speculative bets, which I'd go gaming then AI, to be honest, because I just think gaming has more of a chance of succeeding this cycle than AI. I think my AI bets would be much more the infrastructure bets. And that, that is the GPU.net, the Ionets, the renders, because that's a problem that I can see kind of being solved pretty pretty well by, by, by crypto. When I look at other tokens, like I don't, I, don't, I don't really want to m mention them here because you know, I'll get communities jumping down my throat saying I'm being biased and, and, and nasty to the, to the community. But there are a lot of tokens where I just don't think that they're production grade ready. I think the GPU, the GPU um, problem is a problem that crypto can fix pretty, pretty quickly. Like it's like pretty quickly in the cycle, we could actually start getting some results. Um, so I'd probably allocate to layer ones. I'd probably allocate 30% to layer ones. Then I'd move down to deepen and I'd probably put 20% in, or 30% into deepen and probably 2020 into AI and gaming or maybe just a little bit more into gaming. Uh, keen to hear your views. How would you allocate $10,000 or $20,000? Funny because D deepen is kind of cheating a little bit. You know, a lot of my AI videos, if you watch them, you know, I'll talk about AI, but then I'll actually say deepen is actually, you know, the strongest bet in the AI sector because if people don't know what, what deepen does, it's essentially decentralized private infrastructure networks to facilitate compute for AI and gaming um, applications. And of course, AI is one of the most uh, computer power intensive um, activities there is. So if, if you're going to have AI on a wide scale, you're going to need cheap computes, you're going to need deep in. So I guess like, I, oh, yeah, I would, I would agree with you. I would say 30% deep in, but I'm also kind of cheating now because I'm getting exposure to AI and gaming indirectly Fair just enough. as a layer one, you're getting exposure to other dApps indirectly. But if, you, if I had to, I would I would actually be very similar to you. I think layer ones uh, are, are a must have, of course. And then then probably AI, AI slash deep and I'll put it in the same category. Then gaming and then something you didn't mention is is meme coins. I would have as 10% just for the fun of it. Just because okay. I think, I don't know, if, if, and, if we really do see this retail velocity, it's like memes are just going to perform well. And it's pretty much like a known thing now. Uh, so. out, of, out of the L1s, which, what are your bets on L1s? What's your, what's your favorite L1? Still Solana or have you had an about turn? I, I like Solana a lot as I actually think it does perform well. It's actually showing signs of outperformance. I think it, it, it could continue to outperform. Um, but at the current valuation, so obviously in terms of a hold, yes, Solana. At the current valuation, I think plays like, say, Injective's high, but it's still 
reasonable like those kind of plays i think have more upside um and then there are some really good like upcoming ones like monad i mean this is a little bit further down if we're talking about an extended cycle but parallelization is super interesting so you've got monad you've got eclipse which is an upcoming layer two um i'm an early investor in it it's basically a uh i, I don't know you probably saw recently that cap was absolutely stacked yeah. um and they're they're doing the solana ev solana vm play so it's like yeah, I think a lot of these upcoming layer ones are going to be very interesting to watch as well. Layer ones, layer twos. Manda, I know you're obsessed with Solana, but let's talk about how you'd allocate ten thousand dollars if you were investing. What narr- <clears throat> what narrative you're going to, and then maybe tell us about your uh, layer ones that you like. Yeah, look, <coughs> I, 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 you guys have kind of hit the nail on the head. Like, we, we essentially went down there, and the argument for AI is, is the strongest meme. Like, it's the strongest as as people try to allocate what could be the strongest narrative. Who's selling the biggest dreams? People can sell some pretty pretty big dreams right now in AI. Um, I like certain to- tokens there. Like I think FET is an in- interesting token. I think, uh, like you said, some of the the GPU tokens are, are interesting. I think my biggest allocation, if we if I think we are early mid cycle, let's say, I still think the memes will perform the best. So so how would you break uh, up your t- how would you break up your ten thousand dollars? So right now, in terms of my altcoins, memes meme coins are still my biggest bag um, in terms wow. of the altcoins, and then it's followed by um, yeah, I guess I have some deep in, I have some, and then it's mainly uh, mainly L ones. I have a small like I have Fat as as my like AI play because I think it's at two or three billion. I think it could it could still be many multiples on dreams, like just on the idea that we can sell a we can sell a narrative here. Uh, and then in terms of L ones, like it depends on the risk reward curve. Like for L ones, that's really my hold throughout the cycle bag. Uh, the reason why I'm, I'm I'm big into memes right now is because I think we're early mid cycle. Like they can still really perform. I don't really want to be owning memes at the end of the cycle but l1s i'll hold throughout the whole cycle and for me solana if we go back to the start of the conversation like i i'm i'm a much bigger looker at uh looking at flows rather than I am looking at just um just charts for me this whole ftx thing like if i was there and i was i was there trying to buy the estate from ftx um that, that 250 million and and i was doing some spv to try and finance it like me and my buddies would be trying to push down the price of Solana to get that deal done. The moment that that clears and that supply clears, I think that could that could really fucking shoot. Um, oh, God. Uh, but yeah, the, I think that's my favorite one for sure. Um, and then after that, look, I think Ethos had a very good run. I, w- I wouldn't get involved in that. I think in terms of what you just said, Say has got this paralyzed EVM. It's like no one knows what it means, but it's provocative. Like I think that could, that could keep going. Um, and yeah, like, objective, like I said, there's not, Again, no one really knows. Uh, it's, not, it's got a huge amount of TVL. So these sort of things where you can sell a narrative and they're still relatively low. I think say it's like 7 billion, objectives a few billion. They could do many multiples uh, at this point in the cycle. I agree. The I think say- market right now is the layer twos. If you actually look at how competitive it is, like with, with ZK Sync, with Linear coming, Stark, like that's actually a super interesting space too, especially with Vitalik pretty much coming out and saying like, yeah, this is the way Ethereum is going to scale now. We're going to, we're going to just rely on roll-ups. I don't know. I just, no one likes L2s though, right? You, just, you, on CP, everyone hates the experience. Like everyone prefers the monolithic experience. I, I, I've, that's just the general sense of things. Like people prefer Solana to, to many of the, many of the L2s. So <clears throat> I'm not too sure. I think if this ETH ETF doesn't go through, I do think that the ETH narrative becomes a little bit more difficult, particularly for those for those L2s. Like if they don't have- The reason I bring it up is because I'm not saying they'll outperform, but you know, we're, we're talking about TVL. You mentioned the reason I thought of it is because you said, oh, there's not much TVL on objective. You look at where the TVL is objectively, yeah. 60% on Ethereum, another 20 to 25% on L2s. That's where the money is. So like, you know- I agree. Obviously the layer ones pump harder, but that's where the money is. I don't, I don't like the, I don't like the ETH layer two trade. I don't like ETH. I don't like the ETH layer twos. It's, it's a spaghetti factory, but specifically when you're trying to use it, it's so complicated to use and you're hopping from one to another. So much nicer just to trade meme coins on Solana and be able to trade in and out with mm-hmm. zero fees and stuff like that. I did a meme coin trade the other day. I had to get money from my ETH wallet to my Solana wallet to buy it. it cost me $150 just to get my money from one place to the next and then to buy the meme and trade the meme cost me less than one cent which is like that's when i realized like what the hell am i doing here honestly like let me just be on solana instead of of being on on the ETH layer twos but as miles says 60 percent of the tvl is in in the ETH layer twos 
I like say, like say you can move, like they're going to their V2, they could move a, a lot of EVM um, style applications could move there very, very quickly over the coming months. And once you get a monolithic chain, which has a bunch of TVL, like even some TVL, those things are really, like you've seen how SUI ran, like that, you know, if you get one of these L1s that starts to pick up TVL quite quickly, I think they can run very, very quickly. So yeah, I still like them as a risk reward trade. Like I can't really see how Say is going to go down. What about Denkun? I mean, by the time people watching this video, it might have been yesterday, but um, ETH L2s could become a lot more competitive. I'm just kind of being the, the counter argument here. Like I agree right now, Solana is the ultimate experience. I totally agree. Six months, one year's time, I don't know. We're going to be having the same conversation, you know, with Linear, ZK, Sync, et cetera. Like these guys, you, you can't deny, like they've had billions and billions of dollars in funding, much more developer funding than Solana. So I, I just wonder if that if the experience there will end up being... Yeah, there's also a lot of experimentation having happening on ETH, eigenlayers, eigenlayers happening primarily on ETH. And, you know, there's a lot of exper experimentation happening on ETH that's not happening on Solana because it's just not not conducive. And you kind of have to take a bet that, that something's going to come out of it. OSF, we are running out of time. So how would you allocate your $10,000 and tell us, you know, you, maybe your favorite tokens? Yeah, I'd be I'd be heavy on ETH right now, personally, and ETH and Sol. I think that would be like 60 to 75% of my bag. I think those have the best risk reward in the market right now. Um, I do think, I know there's some ETH ETF, uh, but I do think it will be approved. And I think you can see both of those. I see both ETH and Sol as like three to five X trades and with much less downside than anything else out there. So I think- You, you think that the ETH those. ETF would be approved in May when it's supposed to be approved? Or do you think it's will it be, it'll be approved, but just yeah. not- not anytime soon kind of thing. I have a feeling it still will be approved in May. I, I do think BlackRock will push for it. I think Larry Fink will push for it. And I think the SEC, you know, if they don't approve it, they're, they're risking court cases and they're risking another loss and Gary Gens is on his last legs. Like, I think there's a lot for them to lose by just rejecting it just because, you know, they have a, um, you know, a chip on their shoulder. So um, I think they, I think it probably does get approved. I, I'm, you know, I'm acknowledging that the probability is much lower than it was for Bitcoin, but I think it probably does. And I think that's when you see much more, you know, I think we're not really, because everyone's like, oh, I want to outperform ETH or I want to outperform perform Sol because people live in one ecosystem. So then they chase meme coins and alts and et cetera, et cetera. I think they just forget, like sometimes the best thing is just in front of you. And it also has the least downside as well, because, you know, to your point, Rand, like some meme coins may run now, but they might not be around next cycle. And then you can't really underwrite those trades for, for many years, but you can with something like ETH. I think you can with something like Sol. And so they would be the largest part of my bag. But having said that, the, the remaining... What do you put the remaining? Would be, a meme, would be a meme coins. <laughs> meme coins. So not AI, not, not AI, not gaming. You're going straight into meme coins. Uh, you know what? I don't, I don't really find the AI stuff that exciting. I think it's too like... For me, crypto itself is one big meme and I'm, I'm not a mid-curve. I just want to like buy things without rationalizing them and just but knowing that the number will go up. And for me, AI is just too much to read. Like I have very low attention span. It's amazing. Yeah, which meme is. coins, not financial advice. The audience is probably thinking this, right? You keep talking about meme yeah. coins. What which meme, meme coins? coins? <laughs> uh, I mean, we got yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, come on, come on, come on, <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. Just give us like three, come on, just three. I mean, the only ones that I own now, I still own, so I sold 75% of my whiff, but I still own, have quite a large moon bag. But I, I was in that one earlier. Like I bought that one, like between two and a half and four and a half cents. So wow. that's you must a, be so yeah. fucking rich. <laughs> I wish. Um, that was a big win. Morg is another one that I have as well, which I think is, I think it's about almost a $500 million market cap, maybe 400. Um, give us the DJ one ones. Like. Come on, give us the DJ ones. Give us the DJ ones. I think, I think if you're, you're going to pick the ones that are going to get listed, it will be those like mid, there's some mid tier exactly. Solana ones, but like Myro, Popcat, a yeah. couple of others which are in like the 300 to 500 range. CT's behind them. They're all going to try and get them listed. Like, I think those will run. I, I actually don't even own either of those, but I'm telling you, mid tier Solana ones, once they get above 200 million, there's a very good chance. Okay, well, well, come on, give us the list of the ones that are above. So you, you mentioned Popcat, you mentioned Amaro. Come on, just give us like three more. I, and I also like some of the election play, plays, right? Like yeah. I think Trump, Trump will do well into, into this year. Like I think that will do well. And then there's been a few more DJ ones recently, like you said, like the the one which is Donald Trump and and Bowden and, and the Elizabeth Warren one. I, I think election is going to be a big, big one. So I think you could play some of those. And those those are more like under 100 million. So you could play them and who knows what happens. 
All right, guys, listen, we're completely out of time. So I just want to say thank you very much. It's been amazing having you guys. Great alpha. I think the tempo was fantastic. Uh, Miles, good to see you again on the channel. Keep uh, shooting the lights out on your own channel. Been amazing. Uh, see you guys again soon. Also uh, to the banter fam. I uh, love you guys madly. Uh, I won't be here tomorrow, but I will be here probably Friday and Saturday doing some meme coin shows. Remember, if you're not already subscribed to Banter Plus, make sure you subscribe to Banter Plus. Make sure your notifications on because this is where the alpha is going to be coming for the next couple of days. So I will see you guys again soon. Until then, trade well, my friends. Mm -hmm.